So it has been almost three months ever since I started my new beginner account series. And in that series, I kind of made it my point to prove that all you really need to do as a beginner is farm giants. And as you guys can see in the background right now, that's kind of the team composition that I ran with for like the last 30 days ish. I never really changed it too much. I basically always end up swapping one or two units out every single month to like just gradually improve it. And it turns out I even made one video already talking about the pros and cons of only farming giants slightly faster, but the entire concept kind of stayed the same. And yeah, I just realized that I'm wearing the same shirt in this video again. I'm not gonna change that anymore, fuck that. No, but honestly, the real reason why I wanted to make this video today is because I did notice that the Giants main strategy, it does have its pros, it does have its cons. And the longer you do actually stay in Giants, mainly farming that when it comes to Kairos, the more you're gonna notice that. And I wanna talk about that in today's video. As well as at the end, I wanna showcase my actual room builds. I wanna showcase like the room quality that you can expect from about two months worth of farming Giants. And honestly, I wanted to make this video about eight days from now, but with the new update coming out really soon, I just decided to kind of just Go ahead already, uh, I've been farming the fuck out of this account anyway, so chances are if you actually want to stick with that sort of strategy, my results are probably gonna be what you can expect after 90 days of gameplay. I've been like just no lifing the fuck out of Summoner's War lately. Nice That's a big boy. But yeah, let's just start off this discussion segment with another one of my paint presentations. Uh, this time around, we're gonna talk about giants. And I already used one of these before, and you mostly are gonna just see that in the pro section, so I'm not gonna repeat myself when it comes to that. But there have been a lot of issues that I came across that I briefly touched on in my first part already that I kinda wanna just expand on. Now, when it comes to the negative sides of only farming giants for the first couple of months of your progression, I'd say the biggest one that I've already touched on just briefly it didn't really affect me too much since you really do not need like fully maxed out ruins early on when it comes to pve and since i was mostly doing arena like using farming defenses on people etc like i really didn't have issues in pvp either but bottom line is you're gonna have a lot of mana struggles you're not gonna be able to max out your runes i was struggling pretty hard even maxing out my actually best in slot two, four, six room. And not even to talk about slot one, three, and five. Like it's insanely hard for me to get enough mana. I think the highest that I ever had on this account was about 10 million before free run removal. And that was during a double mana event. During that event, I actually built a necro team for like just one or two hours and ended up grinding that much mana. So yeah, it's, it's just insanely hard to actually gain mana when you're only farming giants. It goes hand in hand with actually just speed chasing on all of your room, upgrading most of them to plus three, plus six, somewhere along those lines, and then just deciding if you want to sell them or not. Not, you hardly ever upgrade runes to plus 12 with this sort of strategy early on and even though the rune sets themselves give you a lot of stats and the runes that you're going to keep from the shit ton of runs that you're going to be able to make at the end of the day you're going to have worse stats than people that farm a lot of necro because again you're not going to be able to max those runes for a very long time and that is like by far the biggest con when it comes to like early game progression for like a little bit more end game PVE scenarios, such as dimensional holes, elemental rifts. It is kind of like essential for you to have all of your runes maxed. Yeah, so that was my Lapis first skill, not killing off the minions. Fucking A. So I guess what we learned from this is like, I honestly feel like the runes that we put on these units are good enough. I have some runes that would need to be two four like maxed two four six wide. They, they, it would feel like a waste. The next con that you're gonna start seeing, I already talked about how like PvP early on when it comes to like arena for instance, you're mostly gonna use farming defenses, meaning that you're gonna use like one or two units in your defense to stay at a low rank to just be able to just rush out your arena wing. But it turns out that there is actually some different PvP content as well, not just like regular arena, uh, the biggest one being gear content, uh, where you do get a shit ton of extra rewards and also crystals. Like in my eyes, gear content is like by far one of the most important contents for you to like clear early on to get yourself some extra rewards like if you see yourself running out of crystals maybe not try and get into like conquer one conquer two arena but actually try and improve your guild siege defenses and the thing is most pvp units that work well with giants runes they're not too good in pve progression i mean you got your speed buffers but when it comes to one shot units uh, like a kali like a let's say a bulldozer even most of those units are actually like really dog shit when it comes to pve which is going to slow you down even further like, i'm going to showcase the runes on my units in the second part of this video like i said already 
but you're gonna basically just notice that I have a lot of swift sets on them. And even though I do get turn one on most of my fights, even though I don't even have speed leads, it's insanely hard to like actually catch up to people in turn three, turn four, simply because of those one or two violent sets that they put on their units that actually gets them a lot of advantages. It's gonna be just toxic as fuck. Like this account is really bad. Like my, my beginner account is not made to do like, it's crazy how good people's runes are at these ranks. Uh, I didn't expect them to be this good, honestly. So we're gonna go for the Meiho Wang. I think this is gonna be the, the only chance of us like winning. It's the armor breaker in this. And now we just wanna get rid of him. And we don't. So this is gonna be a dad crow and a lost fight now. Nice suit. So bottom line is when it comes to this point is you're gonna notice a lot less performance on your units that are like hybrids such as let's say like a Lauren, a Vigor, things of that nature. Stuff that is actually useful for PvE and PvP. While you can use them in PvP like Guild War, you're gonna not have as much success with I definitely them. did notice my account getting worse and worse the more I farmed it's it. It's very hard to get this many six stars very early on and because of that reason like you don't really want to use units that spike very hard with giants runes that are pretty much only good for PvP. And the last point is going to be farming R5 which I actually ended up doing after about 40 days which again my giants account was kind of the main reason why i was able to get this early into r5 and i've just basically spent like one or two hours every single day grinding r5 on the side when i didn't feel like farming giants like one minute runs they are kind of obnoxious after a while you want to have slower runs every once in a while while you're cooking etc and simply because my account is so decked out when it comes to pretty much just giants runes i ended up having a lot of grinds for other rune sets that i haven't found for yet that are just laying in my storage so while farming r5 pretty early on is a really good thing you're not going to be able to make the most out of it simply because you haven't found all of the three kairos dungeons before it's pretty straightforward if you think about it but anyways but yeah with all of that said let's get into the actual room portion of my video kind of showcasing what you can expect after about 60 days of farming giants and i think i want to just start off showcasing my speed booster and as you guys can see plus 184 i think i was at about plus 175 like 20 days ago bottom line is i would attribute my huge boost and starts not just to farming giants but also to getting into r5 pretty early on and then just like figuring out which rune is actually like gonna be on a unit for a very very long time like this rune even though it's slot one i can already tell you guys that i'm gonna be using it for a very very long time same goes for runes like these like there is really no downside to upgrading runes like this but again i mean just because it's slot one three and five we're gonna not get as much progression as we could get if we were to let's say spend our mana on like slot two runes with speed on it so pretty much what you're gonna see on my account is that i can pull off about three or four swift sets that are about plus 140 speed and above that like as you guys can see right now my vigor in rta is also pretty fast it's kind of just the pros of mostly farming giants i have a shit ton of swift sets and when it comes to rune sets that's something that i find pretty weird like i have a lot of swift sets uh, that are also pretty fast on top of that but when it comes to like let's say blade runes or fatal runes i really don't have that many to work with uh, fatal is one of those rune sets that a lot of beginners think is only really useful for let's say like one shot units like let's say my Lucian for instance I can just quickly showcase that to you guys now those are the stats of my Lucian and I would not be able to pull off a very fast Lucian if it wasn't for slot 2 speed I know it's kind of weird it doesn't one shot waves but like this I can at least use them somewhat yeah, bottom line is I have about two or three fatal sets with pretty much just one being actually full damage and the other two sets being useful for my Huahi and also my Juan which both are kind of like attack based healers so for instance I know a lot of beginners that would just completely always end up selling let's say slot 6 HP percentage on fatal runes but these sort of units are kind of the reason why I ended up keeping when it comes to blade sets that's kind of my substitute to most beginners rage runes I end up just running most of my damage dealers on like a double triple blade set let me look for one I think yeah my six still is on a double blade set uh, my crow I finally swapped off of the blade set to a swift set to make use out of his pretty insane base speed as you guys can see plus 108 yeah just to give you guys a rough idea of like how many rune sets I've gotten after like the last two and a half months of farming giants I have about four or five swift sets that are actually pretty fast and about four or five swift sets that are actually like just 
thick rune sets that I can use on PvE supports that don't need to be unviolent. Like an example for that would be my John for TUA hard and TUA normal. I have a lot of blade runes, like pretty much I can deck out all of my damage dealers. I have probably about 20 blade sets that I can use. Um, about three or four despair sets. Uh, if you look at this, like my despair runes actually are by far my strongest sets. Uh, I just ended up swapping them off of my Lapis though because I wanted to make her work in things like the fire rip. So you're actually gonna see a lot of despair runes that don't have too much use, but I have about three or four despair sets that are actually on like fighter three, conqueror one rune quality already. And then, like I said, I have a bunch of fatal sets, like two or three that are actually worth keeping. And when it comes to energy runes, I was actually pretty surprised how few I actually end up keeping. I have a bunch on my support. So if you like kind of just repeated that challenge after me, uh, maybe let me know in the comment section if that is something that you've noticed yourself as well. And of course I do utilize other rune sets as well that I've gotten from things like farming Kazan and also during things like my daily quests where I have to do like five dragon runs, the in-game missions where we have to get like 10 six star runes from dragons etc so i've been farming a little bit of other done but if i had to like give you guys percentage values of how i spent my energy i would say i found about 75 percent in giants b10 about 10 to 15 percent in r5 and the rest is kind of just mixed when it comes to farming necro during events uh farming dragons for the in-game missions and also doing my reappraise uh, elemental rift runs and also those for like daily quests pretty much but i've made it a point to pretty much just stick with giants i didn't want to fuck up my progression like not doing certain like dailies for instance but like i said i've been pretty much just staying in giants seeing what i can pull off after like even two or three months and if i were to like just summarize my findings and give you guys my general thoughts uh would i repeat would i still recommend farming giants this much for beginners uh, i would say yes even though there have been a lot of changes uh, it's by far like the most like guaranteed way to progress i'd say uh, every once in a while there are people that pull a lot of units that spike very hard with violent runes etc like eventually you want to farm dragons don't get me wrong but i'd say just farming giants for like the first two month minimum it's just kind of like the only way that i think you can guarantee getting far in this game believe it or not like you are going to get two or three violent sets no matter what, like from crafting, from in-game missions. It's not going to be a problem in that regard. But now I kind of feel like I've reached a point on my account where I'm already satisfied enough when it comes to my own giant's runes. And I want to branch out, uh, mostly farm dragons for like one or two weeks, get all of the other rune sets, not just the violent sets, to actually put grinds on and further broaden my rune. And I think the last thing that I want to mention is going to be elemental rifts that I've been trying to go for very hard. I actually am able to get an S score on both the fire and ice beast and I'm currently building towards a S score on the wind beast. I've been like going really hard on building like units that work very well for the wind beast and also maybe like try and include them in my Kazan teams etc like building Kaleen for R5. If you already have let's say like a Fran. It's kind of just like a side grade for that. Same goes for Juan. I am gonna use him in Kazan most likely as well, but it's not the most versatile unit as it is. It just kind of sucks that I am cock blocked by things like having my towers not being maxed, having my drunken master being far from fully skilled, having my Huahi being like basically one skill up away from having your heal maxed and getting some additional cooldown reduction, which is basically essential for these sort of rift dungeons. I mean, that's just gacha games in a nutshell, I guess. And even though we constantly keep missing our goals by just a little bit, I still feel pretty good about this account. Uh, I'm definitely gonna do a 90 day RTA challenge with it. So that's gonna be in eight days from uploading this video right now. I'm gonna be live streaming that on my Twitch as always. So make sure to follow me there. Like pretty much every single live stream, there's like one or two people just tuning in to let me know that they've been watching me for like two three years which honestly it feels pretty good even though my streams aren't like the most let's say high quality high production values uh, i'm mostly just farming tilting in rta tilting in guild siege Come around, let's actually play it safe like i'm gonna not fuck around i had some issues with my guildies the other day um with me being a little bit too uh, eager to do guild siege and just fighting against okay we missed one armor break on my 100 accuracy galleon which might actually lose me the fight um so I hope the Cayman, okay, that was three procs, violent, violent. Fuck it, hey. Fuck it, hey. But I still want to like thank you guys for all the support. I've ended up slowing down my YouTube videos by quite a bit, mostly just because I've been editing for other people, but also because I've been focusing a lot on streaming itself. Um, and even though it did pay off 
quite a bit. I'm averaging about like 80 to 120 people watching me at all time. I still feel like I want to return back to like producing weekly videos at least. I'm just kind of getting into that. I just felt like pretty burned out with not too much PVE content being out there and all of these fucking RTA like replay YouTube channels just stealing my clickbait. On the topic of YouTube videos, again, I want to shout out my secondary YouTube channel where I basically just post all of my stream highlights. Like, I seriously cannot be bothered to post my monster showcases uh, like two days after they actually get released. Like I can't edit this fast and I don't even want to bother. If you want to like get my opinions on let's say balance patches, on new Hall of Heroes units, etc. Those videos are going to be on my secondary channel. It's called Sample Streams. We've been getting a shit ton of followers on that channel every single time I shout it out. So I'm just going to stick with that strategy. But yeah, I think that's pretty much going to be it. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I hope you guys found it somewhat educational. I know I'm like kind of repeating myself every once in a while with these sort of videos. Some of these videos are basically just like housekeeping. Well, I want to like state something specifically without having you guys search through my stream vods that are like three hours long. I'm just going to like make a video specifically on this topic and just kind of go from there. But yeah, that's pretty much going to be it. See you guys in my next video. Bye.